Hello, my beautiful buds. Welcome back to my channel, Sprouts with Joy. My name is Joy, and if you'd like to talk about plants, you're in the right place. And today's plants that we're going to be talking about are plants that I kind of may or may not have fallen out of love with, <laughs> or at least they're plants that I got thinking, wow, I'm so excited to add these plants to my collection. They're going to spark so much joy. But then somewhere along the way, they kind of lost their spark for me. And my expectations were not really fulfilled. Now, I don't want to offend anybody. All these plants are perfectly fine plants. And I'm still holding out hope that I'm going to fall back in love with them. I'm still taking care of them that sort of thing uh, but yeah they're just right now in this moment they're not doing it for me sadly and every time I look at them I'm like I'm you're not doing what I want you to do and the first plant I'm going to talk about is actually the plant that inspired this video in the first place and it is the Stromanthe Trio Star. Now, if you've been with me for a long time, you would know that this was actually a plant that was on, oh, it's like dripping water because I just watered it, ugh. But it's a plant that was on my very first wish list video. And don't get me wrong, I still think that it's a beautiful plant. Um, it's just that my plant in particular has given me some grief. For a while, it was an easy plant for me relatively speaking, uh, even though it's from the Marantesia family. But um, then the spider mite raids began and it just got ravaged over and over. My baby is like accenting what I'm saying right now. You know, he was in a place with a humidifier. I was treating him the way that I treat the rest of my plants with spider mites. It just like, for some reason, it was like an absolute magnet for the little guys. And that made me feel really discouraged because I was treating him like I was treating all my other plants and all my other plants. The spider mites left them, but they just kept on coming back to this guy, Ugh, which is upsetting. And so then I sort of was like, okay, I'm just gonna ignore you for a while just out of spite i guess you know you know what i mean like sometimes if a plant is giving you a hard time you're just exhausted and you don't want to keep on caring for it in the same way that you usually do that's sort of what was happening to me i was just kind of getting tired but then one day i was like okay well i'm gonna repot this plant and maybe that will help and it was severely root bound uh which maybe was contributing to the stress and whatnot and i just didn't realize it uh so i repotted it but then it started to decline again um and now i'm worried that it has root rot <laughs> Because, okay, look at, first of all, all these crispy leaves. Sometimes I forget to water it, and this is how the Marin TCA family behaves. When you forget a watering, leaves crisp up, get dead. But then, like, even some of these new leaves that are coming in, like right here, like there was a new leaf that was coming in right here, and it just died while coming out, which is never a good sign. And it has been retaining moisture even more than normal, and Oh my gosh, I'm literally dripping so much water on myself. Which, I watered this plant because it was pretty dry for once, but it's just been taking a really long time to dry out. And now it has loads of fungus gnats in it. Like, I was wondering why I was getting so many fungus gnats because I've mostly taken care of them, but then I started getting another like resurgence of them and I realized the source was this dang pot. This plant was not only the source of a lot of spider mites, but also the source of a lot of fungus gnats. And I'm just like, bro, you are getting on my last nerve and you don't even look that pretty anymore. Like, Yes, yeah, some of these leaves are nice, but like, ugh. And I've had to go through, it's not as full anymore because I've had to go through and like chop off a bunch of leaves that were dead or dying. And I'm just, I'm just about done with this plant. I might be willing to start over and give it one more shot with like a new plant. If this one dies, I just squashed a fungus net. I might be willing to do that um, because I do really think this plant is beautiful and maybe I just need to turn a new leaf with it. But uh, as of right now, I'm just, when I look at this plant, I'm just so discouraged. <laughs> All right, that was probably like the most long-winded one of these, but next I'm gonna talk about my watermelon peperomia. <laughs> and my thing with the watermelon peperomia, maybe, I mean, 
I'm totally open to maybe I just don't know how to care for pepperomis as well because I'm, I am less confident with this genus, but <laughs> it just looks so bad. And every time I try to care for it, like I recently repotted it to see if that would help because the soil is pretty compacted and I've been really intentional to try to water it more and stuff like that. But like, I feel like everything I do makes it worse. <laughs> Cause like some of the leaves are really nice, but it's so floppy and gangly and a lot of leaves have been dying recently or like are crispy and deformed and like it's putting out small leaves. And I'm just like, bro, I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know, it could be a nutrient deficiency or honestly, I just, I'm, I've been a little bit overwhelmed because I'm just like, I don't know what you want. And I feel like the thing about this plant is that it will never look as good as the day that I got it. And that's just not something that I want from plants. Like when I get a plant, I want it to grow and really thrive in my care. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? But unfortunately with this plant, I feel like it's just declining steadily and it's not growing and looking beautiful and getting bigger and better. It's just, ugh. It's not great, it's not a good look. So maybe someday I'll get another one and this might be a plant that I just have to treat like, I think De La Plants says it about watermelon peperomia as well, which I totally agree with her. I might just have to get one, you know, every year. It looks really nice. And it's kind of like a bouquet of flowers that you keep in a vase and you have to replace it every so often. But you know, it can still look beautiful. It's just not going to be a long-term plant. Unless I can somehow turn it around magically, repropagate the whole thing, I don't know. It's just, it's not gonna happen for me, I don't think. So, there's that. Next, this one hurts me, but it's my Philodendron Dark Lord. Okay, I will preface with saying that I think that this plant in general, like I really, really love this plant, but this plant specifically that I actually own, has been very discouraging for me and it has not fulfilled my expectations and dreams that I had for this plant, at least not yet. So I've had this plant for well over a year now, like a year and a half, I think. I got it as a top cut that took months upon months to root and it almost rotted on me. I managed to rescue it, but it just, it has taken so long to get to this point and look at this newest leaf that I've put out, like bro. Are you kidding me? So occasionally, like this leaf, I was like, okay, we're getting somewhere, but then I put out this leaf. And this plant has already gone through so many leaves, like it will put out a leaf and then lose a leaf, put out a leaf, lose a leaf, and they sometimes get a little bit nicer and bigger, but sometimes they don't. And they're like this, and they're super wimpy and sad. And I don't... It's just frustrating to me because I got this plant when I couldn't find it anywhere else, but I like managed to find a cutting of it locally and I was so excited and had these grand expectations of like a really big, beautiful plant. Um, but last week I went to my local garden center and I saw like bigger, fuller ones than this for like $10, <laughs> which it's not about the money necessarily. It's more so I've, I've worked so hard to get this plant to this point with very little reward when now I can just spend $10 and get a plant that's bigger and better than this. I, I, I feel like that shouldn't bother me, but it does just a little bit. It does enough for me to look at it and be like, why? Why aren't you like doing what I want you to do? Is I've given him pretty good conditions. I mean, not greenhouse cabinet conditions, but I've kept up with him, you know? I've tried really hard to make him happy. I don't know, maybe he just needs more time and maybe someday he'll take off. And I really, really hope that he will. But as of right now, he has not fulfilled the expectations that I thought that he would. At least it's taking him a really freaking long time, okay? He's a super slow grower too. Give me something here. I feel like he looks almost the exact same as he did last year. <sighs> it's fine. Next is my Pearls and Jade Pothos. Okay, so this is 
it's it's a fine plant it's pretty i did get it a while back when i was really on like my pothos kick and i was like collecting every kind of pothos out there um, my first pothos was actually an enjoy pothos which is incredibly similar to the pearls and jade pothos and i don't know i think my philosophy when it comes to house plants and collecting house plants has shifted a bit since i got this plant and since i already have an enjoy pothos it's like what was I doing getting this plant thinking that it would do something different from the Enjoy Pothos? You know what I mean? Like, they're practically almost, like, you almost can't differentiate the two of them. Like, the only difference is that Pearls and Jade Pothos has, like, speckles on the white, technically, I think is the technical difference. And honestly, I think it's beautiful, but it's also... I mean, it's similar to the Mangela Pothos, but with smaller leaves. And what is this growth pattern? Like, stop it. Stop. I want you to like trail down nicely, not like swoop back up. You know what I mean? So it's just like, and it's also battled mealybugs a lot, which I know is not its fault, but it's one of those plants where the pest was pretty stubborn on it. So I think that resulted in some deformed growth as well. So all in all, it's like, I can appreciate this plant, but when I got it, I th I feel like I just had bigger expectations. In retrospect, it's like, what did I think this would do? Like, it, what? I don't know. I still like it. I'll still take care of it, but it doesn't scratch the itch that I thought it would, if that makes sense. So it's just kind of like, okay, you're in my collection. I don't feel any special way about you. So, and it's it's a bummer too, because I was so excited to see this in the store, because I was like, oh my gosh, it's a pearls and jade pothos, and I've been reading about all the different kinds of pothos online, and da da da. You know, I was like in my more beginner plant parent phase, where I was excited about all the different kinds of plants that are like, you know, they only have tiny differences, but I wanted to have them all, you know? And now I'm just like, mm, I'd rather have like a variety of plants in my collection that are a little bit more different from each other, so. I don't know. Okay, and since we're talking about pothos, uh, I decided real fast to address my Mandula pothos. I think, objectively speaking, I definitely prefer this plant over the Pearls and Jade pothos. And I think it has a lot more potential to make me happy. I think it's, I mean, the leaves are just so beautiful. But the thing about this plant that has discouraged me is that it's such a slow grower. And I feel like it looks the exact same as it did like a year ago. <laughs> And part of me is worried that maybe it like got a case of root rot or something like that and then just didn't recover. But I feel like this plant is a plant that gets so, so, so thirsty really fast and I water it, you know, try to address it as quickly as possible so that it doesn't get wilty and lose leaves and stuff like that. But then it doesn't really grow to reward me for like how thirsty it is. And it's like, okay, what are you, what are you doing? Like... <laughs> My um, Philodendron Brazil and my Syndapsis Pictus Argeria over on the other side of the room that are farther away from the window here, like they are growing a lot faster than you, buddy. And you're closer to the window, you're getting more light, you're getting more water, so like what's the deal? <laughs> you know, he's supposed to be like a low maintenance pothos, but like I feel like he's just not rewarding me very much. So I do have some pieces of this propagating right now, and I think I want to try a version of it climbing up a pole, and if I prefer that to the trailing version, I might just do that. Wow, you are really talkative right now, aren't you? <laughs> and if I prefer that to the trailing version, then like, I don't know, maybe, maybe he'll redeem himself in my eyes, but it's just, oh yeah, really. Maybe he'll redeem himself, but like, as it is right now, He's not doing what I want him to do, which is really sad. Cause again, I, I do really like this plant and as far as, oh really? And as far as pothos go, I mean, this is definitely one of my favorites, especially like of the Epipremnum arium area. This is probably my favorite, but it's just this specific plant in my collection is not delivering. Okay, this guy, it is a really pretty plant. Okay, this is the Tradescantia, I believe, Crisophyla or something like that, but I bought it as like the baby bunny bellies plant or vine or something like that. And okay, on camera, like looking at it, it's really pretty. Even my son is laughing at it right now. He's staring at it and he's like, ah. it is a beautiful plant. Um, and I was so excited about like the velvety leaves on this thing. 
and like the coloring of the leaves and stuff. But okay, but the problem is it's a Tradescantia and I have come to realize that Tradescantia and I, like, we just don't really get along. I just, their growth pattern kind of drives me crazy. They get all tangled, they get really crispy. And I know that like you can, you know, just propagate them easily and stuff like that. But it just, it feels like no matter what I do, it's really hard to get this plant to like look under control and look the way that I want it to. It's like, if you look on the top, there's just a lot of crispy bits and it's just, ah, it's just annoying sometimes when I look at it. And I often do forget to water this plant because it's hanging in a corner. And I really like the way that it looks in that corner, but it's just, I don't know. I feel like it's not doing for me what I wanted it to do. At a distance, I feel like it looks fine, but once you get up close, a lot of the leaves are just looking worse for wear or crispy or just, it just doesn't, I never feel like this plant is happy. You know what I mean? And maybe it is happy because it's still growing, but it's just, I don't know. Like, look at this vine right here. Like there are periodically be vines that just start withering away for no discernible reason. Well, I guess the only discernible reason could be like, maybe I'm just wa not watering it enough, but I don't know. It's still growing and still seems kind of happy, but also unhappy. <laughs> I just don't know how I feel about this plant and sometimes that bothers me. <laughs> like, I have a love-hate relationship with it, probably, is the, is the deal. So, yeah, that's, that's that one. It's fine. It's a little bit of a disappointment, if that makes sense, which is so sad to say about a plant, but I don't know, it just... Again, I was so happy to find it in the nursery and I was like, oh my gosh, this is like the coolest plant ever and it's so fun. But I just think I, I didn't realize <laughs> what the growing pattern would realistically be like. Okay, and then very quickly, this is the last one that's a little bit of a disappointment. And I don't wanna say, I don't wanna say that they're like completely disappointment. There is still plenty of room for me to love this plant, but yes, this is the Hoya Carnosa Compacta. And I think my expectations were maybe a bit too high. There are lots of specimens online that you can find that are so stunning with these long, full tendrils. And they're just so, ugh, they're to die for. But when you look at mine, it's just like, eh. And I've worked so hard to try to make this plant happy. He's been past ridden and I've had to rescue him from so many pest issues and from root rot and all this stuff that I think I'm just starting to get jaded at this point. It's kind of like with the stromanthi where I'm just tired when I look at this plant. I feel like it's not quite as extreme as the stromanthi for me in terms of that feeling, but it's enough for me to include it on this video to where, you know, I really, really hope that this plant fulfills my expectations someday. But just right now, it's not really doing it. It does have some hope, you know, it, it is putting off some new growth. So like that's making me feel a little bit better. I'm, I, maybe I'm just impatient. I'm really, really hoping that someday this will be the nice full plant that I want. But right now it's just taken a really long time to get there and we have fallen backwards in our journey many times. It's like we take two steps forward, one step back type of deal and it's just like, I'm getting tired and I, I'm wanting my beautiful full plant. But again, patience is probably the key there. <sighs> well, I think that that is it. Um, I'm sorry if this video is a little bit of a downer. <laughs> I, I try to make more positive videos than negative videos, but also at the same time, like I wanna be real with you guys and you know show you the plants in my collection that are not really doing what I want them to do or, you know, that make me feel a little bit discouraged. I'm sure that you guys have some plants in your collection that make you feel the same way. If that's the case, please feel free to share your stories down below. I'd love to hear about them. My son is like wiggling over there. He's staring at me like, mom, why aren't you playing with me right now? Like I'm, I'm talking over here. I'm awake. So I guess I better tend to him, but I really enjoyed talking with you guys and I hope that you have a wonderful and blessed day. Bye-bye.